We just saw how easy it is to run code, but sometimes code has bugs and you need to debug it. For JavaScript code, our IDEs bundle WebStorm's debugger. Let's take a look at its key features. Let's open an HTML page using the IDE. As before, we'll use a context menu, but choose Debug. In HTML files, this creates and selects a JavaScript run debug configuration, which is a JavaScript debug configuration type. It points to a URL and our projects index.html page. The configuration uses Chrome as the browser. JavaScript files can be debugged under the Node.js debugger instead of Chrome in a similar way. Right click in a JavaScript file instead of an HTML file and choose debug to start debugging. This creates a new run debug configuration. If we edit the new configuration, we see it is of type Node.js. Debugging in both Chrome and Node.js have similar features. We'll use Chrome first, then finish with Node.js. We commonly log to the console when debugging. This JavaScript file is included in our HTML and has a console.log line. When debugging, the IDE reroutes these log statements from the Chrome console to its console. Breakpoints let you say stop execution on this line. In the IDE, adding a breakpoint is easy. Just click in the gutter beside the line and a red circle will appear. Now when I click, execution stops on that line and shows information about variables. No debug restart nor browser reload needed. Clicking the resume button continues execution past the breakpoint. If our debugger window is hidden, the IDE stops on the breakpoint when it is triggered, then opens the debugger window. When we stop at a breakpoint, we can inspect the state of the program at that point. The variables and values in the local scope and other scopes. You don't have to look in the debugger tool window. Values are overlaid in line as well. If you close a file, and then later reopen it. The breakpoint is still there, even if you close the IDE completely. This also means it's easy to lose track of breakpoints in big projects. With the View Breakpoints dialog, the IDE makes it simple to see all of them and delete breakpoints you aren't using. Perhaps you simply want the debugger to spring up when you hit a problem rather than manually set breakpoints. View Breakpoints lets you set a breakpoint to handle JavaScript exceptions in your code. Let's say we then make a change that has an error. During debugging, when execution hits the exception, the IDE stops on the line with the problem, no manual breakpoint needed. It might be cumbersome to always stop at a breakpoint, repeatedly clicking resume until some condition is met. Instead, we can add a breakpoint, then right click to add a condition for when the breakpoint is applied. The next time we execute, the line is passed over until the condition is met. The IDE's debugger has many ways to walk through your code. First, resume continues execution until the breakpoint is reached again. The loop variable is now increased. Next, step over goes to the line after the breakpoint, even if the breakpoint line calls a function. If you are stopped on a line that calls a function and you want to debug into that function, you can use step into and step through that function's code. When you are done in that function, step out to get back to where you were. Our breakpoint is on a line though with two function calls. How do we tell the debugger which to step into? Use the IDE's smart step into and choose the function. We are now in a function called from a function, called from a function. We can use the frames panel to see the path we took. 
Each frame lets us see the variables at that point. Stepping over code can be laborious. Instead, move your cursor to your target, then click the Run to Cursor button to step all the way to that line. Stopping at a breakpoint lets you use the Variables pane to inspect the scope. What if you'd like more power? You can also, when stopped at a breakpoint, use the console. This prompt is in the context of the breakpoint and its local variables. Or use Evaluate Expression, our graphical pop-up for interactively executing JS, which is also in the context at that breakpoint. It lets us execute expressions, but also visually explore your data. Often you're interested in one particular variable or expression as you step through code. You can set up watches, which focus on the variable or expression. Let's create a watch using an expression about the variable. Now as we resume through the code, we can easily see the expression results at different points in execution. As you leave that scope, the watch will refer to a missing variable. Removing watches is easy. Select the watch and click minus. Like breakpoints, watches are saved in your project and will be there after reopening the file or the IDE itself. Finally, we mentioned at the beginning that these debugger features work in Node's debugger as well as Chrome. Let's change to debugging in Node by first closing the JavaScript debug session. Set a breakpoint, right click in a JavaScript file, and debug to see the Node.js debugger in action. Same features, we stop at the breakpoint, we can see variable values, use the console, and step through our code in all the same ways shown earlier. In this screencast, we showed the productivity of debugging JavaScript in WebStorm, both with the browser engine and with Node.js. To learn about debugging, visit our documentation on this topic, including information on specific frameworks such as Angular. Also, you can find some debugging tips and tricks in the WebStorm guide at jetbrains.com webstorm guide.